Welcome to Not So PG. I'm Brooke Blurt and my pronouns are she and her. Unfortunately, this episode, Maddie's off sick, but he'll be back in no time. But before we get started, I'd like to acknowledge the custodians of the land on which we record. For me, that's Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation. Let's get into it. So it's just me writing solo this episode. Um, There's two of us. (laughs) So if you haven't gathered, I've got, it's just me. But I've got a special guest in today who is someone very, very special to me. It's my dad. Hi, Dad. Hello. (laughs) So for those who don't know Pete, um, well, Peter, he Mm. is my biological dad, but he is my adopted dad. And Mm. when I say adopted, I mean, when I say adopted, (laughs) I mean he didn't adopt me. I've adopted him as a dad. Yes. I said, it you're a great announced. guy. Do you want to be my dad? No, that, <laughs> no, that's not really how it worked. But um, mm. basically Pete hasn't been in my life for that long, but mm. long enough to, I don't know, teach me a lot about um, what it's like to be uh, loved unconditionally by a man and by you. Yeah. Yeah. Do you want to introduce yourself? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm uh, Peter Tidman. I'm from Baladong country uh, in a place called Guam Bagain. And it's just down the hill from um, uh, some cave paintings. And it used to be the meeting ground for the Baladong people. And uh, I've been told all sorts of stories. I'm an optometrist and I meet a lot of the people around and they tell me all sorts of stories about where they would hook up with girls. Uh, <laughs> Just them cliffs over there. <laughs> and there was, they, they talked about when this bridge, they, they built a bridge, the, 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 the people built a bridge, and the, the bridge became some place where, where you could go. And that was part of the part of the. Anyway, <laughs> so that's Baladon country. It's, um, that's York for, uh, it's, York was. Um, sort of southwest. Southwest, of Perth. yeah. Uh, east, directly east of Perth. Yeah. And I think the um, uh, the people who came out there thought it thought it looked like York in England because it was all misty and foggy and green and mm. whatnot. But they, yeah, that was an interesting. Yeah. Well, for so those who I'm don't from. actually know, and I think it's nice that you've um, given reference to that because that's actually my grandmother's country. Yes. Um, so it's really beautiful that you have such a connection to mm. that country because. Mm. That's sort of how we're all connected, isn't it? Yes. Through that yes. place. So I think we should probably give a bit of a backstory because I yes. feel like unless you've watched The Bachelorette or The mm. Bachelor, you won't know mm. who Pete is. Um, but Pete was a huge support um, mm. for me on the show. Um, but how I got um, to meet Pete was actually through, well, through my mum, but she wasn't alive. No. But she was alive when you knew her. Yes. And you guys had a very beautiful connection um, and with my grandmother as yes. well. So Charlotte. Yeah. Charlotte came from Quarrydon, which is just across uh, 50 k's from us, and prior to 1967 her father would go to the school to ask if Charlotte could get educated. Mm. And um, when 67 came about it was a bit late in the game and yeah. Charlotte moved up to Carnarvon and in Carnarvon uh, she met a uh, Malaysian bloke and had Sienna who's um, Brooke's mum and uh, that was it was interesting because uh, Sienna let me see all the youth she introduced me to all the youth because they wanted to play music I'm pretty tall, so they wanted me to play basketball, which I wasn't that good at. I was a good guard, perhaps, but not, not that fantastic. <laughs> um, and we started a youth centre together, and it quickly became apparent that we were all sea babies. And that's okay. it's really funny. When I met Brooke, um, Brooke and Sienna have, are sort of interchangeable in my mind. <laughs> and uh, Sienna loved the loved the ocean, and she was very loyal to all her friends and very passionate about all her friends. And um, used to bite them, used to bite them <laughs> out of love, which is actually 
probably my toxic trait. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, watch out for the bite. Um, no. It's a, it's like a affection thing, isn't yeah, it? It's, yeah, it's what I've known to know mum doing, thinking that that was her way of showing that she loved us. Such an unusual thing. But, um, yeah, was... yeah, I'd rather be bitten than hit. <laughs> <laughs> right, yes. So um, Charlotte, her mum, uh, she and I uh, started some uh, homework classes and Sienna would invite all her friends and I'd I'd uh, finish an optometry, I'd go and buy a chicken and then we'd go over to Charlotte's place and all the kids would come around and we would do a little bit of homework <laughs> and then we'd go down to the video shop, which was the reward. That came quite quickly. Is that when the, <laughs> the movies used to be like a dollar to, yeah, to hire? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, or the, the VHS, the VHS. Yeah. yeah. And, um, yeah, and what was remarkable in meeting Brooke, there's another story, was that um, Sienna, with her um, empathy, wanted, was really interested, though she didn't name it, in mental health. And she eventually was able to do a course in mental health. And when I met Brooke and heard her desire, I remember seeing Brooke give a talk at, at uh, Joondalup campus. Yeah. Was it? yeah. That was when I first went into doing mental health first aid. Yeah. 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 And she was there with third year students <laughs> and there was Brooke who's... I hadn't finished my degree <laughs> and I was just talking in front of these people about this course that they could do. And the lecturer comes up and gives her this big welcome, like mm. this is, you know, visiting lecturer <laughs> yeah. from... It was quite empowering because yeah. I thought, oh, wow, I think people will actually listen to me. And they did. Yeah. And I, I the sat there thing. listening. I sat there looking and the, she immediately engaged, even though her stature is not high, <laughs> she immediately <laughs> engaged all the people and you, at times you could hear a pin drop. Mm-hmm. And so there was this little rocket. And at that time I thought to myself, Sienna would have loved to have been there. Yeah. And, and. Really, um, yeah, in my mind, uh, again, I'm saying the two are mushed together in my <laughs> mind. And so, so maybe my stories might get a bit mushed together. Well, it's so nice because I think like, well, for context, I think a lot of people will know that my mum passed away. So I was only 11 years old when she mm. died. And my grandmother, who they were sort of inseparable as well, yes. right? Um, mm. She also died a month, about a month and a bit later. Yes. So I lost two of them and I was mm. only 11. So I don't know what my mum's life was like or yes. what she was, um, you know, what her aspirations were or what mm. she was interested in. I only know her as my mum and mm. the short period of time that I had her was 11 years. So mm. I don't know what mum was like before then. So it's... It's so nice hearing stories that you tell me about her because it seems that we're so alike. Yeah. And I I I love that. Um and I I sometimes also get super emotional at times because mm. I'm like, well, is my life what my mum's life could have been like if she mm. was still here to this day? And I feel like I'm living out her her dreams and aspirations, yeah, which is, for sure. I would only know, obviously, from what you've said. So mm. it's so nice hearing those stories and especially, you know, stories about my grandmother mm. as well, Charlotte. Charlotte, yeah. it was everything. Describe like you had it. Nen <laughs> to people. She's, uh, I'm pretty big and she was, you know, she was a six foot, she was pretty big, big woman. So what and happened to me? <laughs> <laughs> if I, I didn't get the stature of Nan. No, you got dad. I did. I got, <laughs> got the yeah, Malaysian dad. My Malaysian grandfather. Because uh, some of Sienna's brothers were pretty big. Sienna mm. was, was small. Not that small, but um, <laughs> smaller than, certainly smaller than her brothers. Um, Charlotte uh, tried to keep house in the um, – she tried to keep house but there was always a lot of stuff going on mm. and I think that I was welcomed because um, I'm big and I brought a little bit of stability mm. to to the evenings and we'd have – all the kids would come in and uh, find a safe space in the house and, um, yeah, 
Charlotte, Charlotte and I used to sit down and talk. She used to love playing rummy and uh, she tried <laughs> to teach me cards, which didn't stick, but I used to play the guitar in the corner. Yeah. Um, oh, so for those who don't actually know as well, you're um, you're an optometrist. Yes. Which is typically an eye doctor is what I call it. <laughs> <laughs> um, you've done that all of your life mm. and alongside that you're also, I'd say, a musician. A You're musician. a very talented musician. Dad is one of those freaks that can oh. pick up anything. No, I mean that in a good way. I yes. mean a music freak as in you can pick up chords, mm. you can hear a song and you'll know exactly what the chords are mm. and then you'll be able to pick up an instrument and play those chords and repeat it back. Like he's just so great at that. You can also tell people's prescription by looking at their eyes, which I think is so incredible. But, um, yeah, so that's obviously Tricks. what you do. But new music for you, and I love how you, you know, you said you brought a bit of stability because I think that is quite mm. prevalent in my life with you is that you're also very, like, I feel like I can be myself and safe with you. But that stability mm is what you brought to the community and you were like this big guy with a big... I think the first thing you said to me when we first met at the time was like, I'm the big guy with the guitar in his back. Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> and, um, you know, I think that's how people know you and, like, you know, you you don't... You're not the loudest in the community or the mm. room. You just bring this, like, energy and mm. this safety and this stability to a room. Yeah. So I'll paint a picture for everyone. Mm. So um, Pete and my mum and my nan had a relationship before I was born, basically, yes. right? And you knew my, my, my older siblings, my older mm. brother and my older sister growing up. So mm. you've got photos holding them. Yes. Um, I came into the world, but you and mum sort of just... We had gone over, I had left and mm. gone to... Um, well, was it Carath and then up to Tom Price because mm. I had a there was a project that I was going to be doing up there. Yeah, but you guys lost touch mark. basically. Yeah. Um, fast forward, I come into the world, yeah. eleven years old. Obviously, m- lost mum, lost nan, um, and then I moved to Perth to live mm. with my actual biological dad, mm. Jason. Um, fast forward years, I, I've gone to uni, I've done all these different things, and um, you. In your life, you're still living in York or Guambagain yep. and you cross paths with an auntie of mine. Yes. Her name is Annie Brenda. She's crazy. <laughs> yes. <laughs> to say the least. Um, and now I don't know if this is fate or I don't know if this, I, you know, think things happen in, in your life and timing-wise mm. that it's all sort of meant to be, right? Mm. So you walk out of your clinic that you're working in Northern. Let me, I, want to, I want to say this part. Oh, okay, yes. Okay. That morning, um, in the Guam, where I live, it's a five-acre property and it's it can feel quite remote because there's no neighbours. And I often have a little bit of a meditation in the morning. And that morning, I I felt that I needed to reconnect with um, Sienna's kids. Mm. And I thought, oh, okay, I didn't actually know how I was going to do that, but there was this very strong feeling that I should reconnect. Mm. And that morning I I met Auntie Brenda, who I'd known, she said, oh, I think about 15 years previous, maybe even longer, mm. and Brenda says, Mr. Tidman, Brenda! <laughs> <laughs> And she said, um, I think the second thing, after we greeted each other, the second thing she said, you should go and sort out Sienna's kids. <laughs> so for context, basically my mum had five children, including myself, mm. and we sort of all separated when my mum died, which was mm. actually quite yeah. tragic. But that's a, yeah. another that's, big story. Oh, yeah, that's a, that's a systemic thing. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, yeah, so then... You, she, she gave you my number. Yeah. Yeah. Annie Brenda, she's giving out my number. <laughs> like, no, tomorrow. This is all pre batchy days, but by the way, I was, yeah. I was working in youth work and um, mm. I was sort of head down playing footy. Same thing, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. And then you sent me this really beautiful and long message. 
<laughs> I remember I'd never received a message that long oh. ever in my life. I could tell. Um, I could just tell by the message, you know, what your intentions were, like mm. in terms of connecting. Like, mm. you know, it would just be so confronting I think sometimes people if you get a message like that and it's come out of nowhere and you're like oh my god like like who is this what do they want type thing which is normally what I would be like I didn't have a lot of trust or faith in people but seeing your message and you said I think in it I have some photographs that I'd really love to share with you um of your mum and your nan and I thought okay all right like if it's got some photographs together then there is some sort of relationship there Um, so I was intrigued, right? Mm. And then I was, I was very short on time, I think, mm. and I sort of invited you to come to my grand final. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> so it was my footy grand final. Three of our teams were in the grand final. We won mm. all three um, premierships, which was actually a big day for us. But I slipped out between one of the games to um, have a coffee with you. Yes. And you came with those photographs. Yes. And we sat down we talked for hours, didn't we, to like I was supposed to be going and celebrating my grand final, like all the teams, the youth girls were, sorry, the seniors were finished already mm. and I was, you know, going off to have celebrations with them. Um, but I just couldn't leave the our mm. chat. Um, we sat at That's the local dome yeah, in West Yeah, the local dome, yeah, West Yeah, that's And... Right. You shared one of the first photographs that I've ever seen of my mum when she was 11. School one. 12, yeah. The school one, yeah. Yeah. Sienna would come and give me photographs to look after uh, some of the other kids because there was a lot of movement sometimes in the community and there were certain things that um, Sienna wanted kept safe. Mm -hmm. And then... (laughs) I would find things in the house <laughs> and I said, oh, who's this belong to? <laughs> Ricky, Katrina, you know, that, that was, um, My aunties, was a whole yeah. <laughs> bunch of those uh, boys, not so much. They would just leave socks and <laughs> you random know. stuff. Uh, I had a swimming pool that, which I had to fill in because I didn't want anybody drowning, but that was, that was another story. Yeah. But, um, Which is very rare to have a swimming pool in Carnarvon. Like yeah. If you have a swimming pool in Carnarvon, you are king. <laughs> yeah. So we've come to how we met. Yes. And then I guess fast forwarding, um, you know, from that first experience of us getting to know one another, mm. we just talked all the time mm. and we would catch up for coffee and go for walks and go to dinners and yes. over time like you became really consistent in my life which I I wasn't really used to was I <laughs> no <laughs> <laughs> and um do you want to tell people what you said to me once about uh being <laughs> reparenting oh reparenting <laughs> So I wasn't used to a lot of um, consistent males in my life. Um, yeah. Especially, you know, or just it's just lacking trust in a lot of people, right? And yes. I think you, you've you changed the game a lot for me, mm. um, Pete, I think. What were your observations of me, I guess, you know? And and and, and now. And like, now. Yeah. Oh, I, there was this pocket rocket. <laughs> and there's this pocket rocket and... Uh, and uh, I'm still very, a pocket rocket. Yeah, still, yeah, still a pocket rocket. <laughs> um, that's then and now. That's then and now. <laughs> and I noticed, I noticed, um, uh, as an optometrist, you notice people's, um, um, well, just their eyes, but also how they, their posture and everything. And I was used to seeing Sienna in a very, relaxed way and I couldn't understand why Brooke was not as relaxed and <laughs> it was that because I'd I've got a pretty good memory and even the shoulders yeah, and everything it was there was something there and I remember uh, I remember giving um, Brooke a cuddle and saying this is what a dad cuddle would look like feel like <laughs> 
It's just, this is what it feels like. And mind you, like, it does get me super emotional because it's like my dad, even though he was my, you know, my biological dad, even though he was probably more consistent in my, not, sorry, not that consistent, but, you know, was around more than you. I'd never really hugged or been hugged Mm. like that from him Mm. and always felt like such a burden to him. Mm. And so then getting a hug from you like that was just, it's actually kind of life-changing in a moment, right? Because it's like. Um, yeah, and then you said to me, uh, (laughs) (laughs) you were like, um, it's not even sometimes what you say. I think you hold so much space for me, which is always so beautiful. But you said to me, um, I want, oh, what was it? Something to do. You said. About reparenting. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I, I really wanted, uh, Brooke to know. I can be blunt, perhaps. Um, yeah. Some of the some of the community that talked to me about Sienna just gave me uh, a very negative view of Sienna, which was nothing like what I remember um, Sienna being. I did actually visit Sienna a couple of times, and uh, when she was with Dragon, and, and she was a it's my stepdad. Bit, His bit, actual name is Dragon. <laughs> he's a so bit weird. out of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and and so. I knew um, from just from a couple of the aunties and the people who were talking to me that they might have given Brooke quite a negative remembrances. Mm. And uh, I think at that moment I made it my mission, <laughs> if you wish, <laughs> to bring out all the good stories. and Which you remember a lot of, which yeah. I value so much because – yeah, you're right. I don't, mm. you know, most of my life my mum was an addict. She definitely, you know, abused mm. us as children and we were taken in and out of care all the time. So mm. there was so much happening in our household and and then some stories that you had told me about her, I realised that she had the same things going yeah. on in her household. So it was just sort of like a generational thing which yes. I, you know, then went and educated myself on and, and mm. understood Dude. It's called intergenerational trauma, people. Um, (laughs) But I never blamed my mum because obviously Mm. she was just doing the best that she could Could. with what she could. Um, And you helped me understand that more. Mm. And I think understanding, you know, someone's intentions and their actual genuine nature, Mm. which you knew from Mm. you knew my mum when she was younger than me, Mm. I was like, well, I, I... understand like and you know there's some stories that I hold on to that my nan told me as well Mm. that it sort of all just made sense right yeah um so yeah I never blamed my mum for anything negatively I just Mm. thought you know she had some stuff going on in her life that unfortunately she was battling with as well I've Um, I've got a couple of stories that come to pot yeah uh one of the uh Sienna used to come and uh, do my books as a like a (laughs) Ten-year-old. <laughs> so there's this First Nations child comes into the optometry shop, picks up a bag of cash and checks and goes down to the Commonwealth Bank. I get a ring from the Commonwealth Bank, as you could imagine. <laughs> and uh, she used to count up all the receipts and whatnot. And one night she said to me, she said, um, she said, uncle, some, I, sometimes uncle, sometimes dad, sometimes Pete. Um, she said, numbers, you can rely on them. The numbers, um, the, the law for the numbers is the same today and as it will be tomorrow. <laughs> maths. Yeah. <laughs> Girl maths. maths. <laughs> and um, not so people, not so people. Mm. And I was a bit of a uh, green baby in the woods because I didn't really know what was going on in the community in those early times. So when she came in a couple of days later and she had stolen a lock, a padlock and a lock from my to ten to lock her room. And I thought, oh, she's being a teenager. Mm. She's going to lock the room and put keep out, you know, like just like, you know, uh, like, like a sitcom of some sort. And she, uh, she said, I want to lock my room and I want to be able to lock my window. And even then, it took me a while to to understand where this was all coming from. 
and um, yeah, I, I I think that I'm good at you know reading people and all the rest of it, but I wasn't. I, I it was out of my um, my lived experience as mm. it was, but that quickly changed. Um, yeah. Yeah, so which kind of on. makes me sad because it's like mm. I think at that time it makes me feel like my mum was looking for some sort of safety and some security and obviously yeah. she looked to you, you know, at that time but she wanted it in her own home. Mm. Um, yeah, like we obviously know a lot of stuff mm. together um, about mum mm. and nan and, you know, their relationship as well. Yeah. It was quite volatile at times and... Then also the relationship between my mum and her siblings was not very good either. <laughs> but um, sort of fast forward to mm. us connecting mm. and then, you know, you sharing all these beautiful stories and these beautiful memories has given me such a deeper understanding and so mm. much more clarity with my place and my mm. identity within, you know, my mm. community and my role as well mm. because I think one of the things you we talk about is, you know, mum's role was looking after Nan mm. and mum's role was looking after everyone and mm. she took a lot of pride in that. And mm. um, But then it, too, you know, probably got a little bit, you know, she, was, she just wanted to be a mum as well and mm. she loved being a mum. She loved us kids. Like she wanted was, a white picket fence. <laughs> <laughs> I'm working on it. <laughs> Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, I think we can just say like, you know, you understand her mannerisms and sometimes mm. you say that I've shared the same mannerisms, yeah. which is so spooky in some way. And I share these messages. And stuff They've got the mind. same foot. <laughs> they, it, I remember looking down at Brooke's I've foot. I've got nice feet though, surely. <laughs> oh, beautiful feet. <laughs> and it was the same oh, foot. God. Oh, God. Oh, dear. <laughs> That's so funny. Oh, um, yeah, it seems like we share a lot of memories and stuff, which mm. is great. And I probably have a few traits of Nens as well. Yeah. <laughs> so if I'm just not as big. But I do say small in stature, big on impact. It's big on impact. Yeah. Um, you've got that forthright nature of your gran. And because she, she was. She's quite direct. <laughs> yeah, very direct. I mean, yeah. Sienna picked some of that up too, which is why they're all, you guys are all mushed together to me. <laughs> but um, yeah, uh, uh, Charlotte could be formidable yeah. in, in a very, um, you know, of course, she was big too. <laughs> in, the total package when, when it was up, and there'd be a fist sometimes, and oh, she'd yeah. be defending, she was defending a, the family. Like, and I mean this in the most nicest way, which Nan was an absolute beast, and I think mm. I think that was also what's contributed to me always being honest and being mm. completely myself. Because if we weren't, mm. we would tell you know you can mm. kind of read between the lines, but mm. Nan sort of you know drilled into us that you don't lie, you be honest and, you know, you do things with integrity. Mm. And I was as little as nine, ten learning these lessons and I was looking after her as well because she was very unwell. Um, but even, you know, mum, I could see there was this fierceness in her eyes as well that mm. she she had it in there mm. but there was also this, like, vulnerability with mum where mm. she – you know, she was trying to deal with something and I could tell at a young age but I didn't know what it was. Mm. And, you know, now sort of to full circle things, you know, understanding mental health for me made mm. all the sense to what I was experiencing when I was yeah. younger and, and seeing mm. um, with, you know, substance abuse and alcoholism, all that sort of makes sense now to why we struggled. Mm. But, I mean, yeah, again, sort of... That was all back then and there's some beautiful moments that we have had in mm. Carnarvon and we've had some sad moments as well. But our relationship coming out of that, I think for me, I know in my heart that mum or nan, either one of them, both of them maybe, like sent me you mm. as an oh. angel to oh. be there, you know, and your guidance has just completely shaped so much for me. I mean, 
you were part of the bachelor for, with me mm. and you were that father figure. You are that father figure for me because not that I didn't have it. I had uncles and I've had my brothers, mm. um, you know, and I've had really, I've got a great relationship with a lot of men. Mm. Um, but with our relationship, I think one of the things that I really am so grateful for is just that unconditional love. You you look with me, you look at me with like this absolutely like no judgment and you see me for who I am and see through all the the glamour and the <laughs> all the you know the facades and the the many hats and faces that I have to put on and you just see Brooke and it's so nice. Yeah. There's one time I turned up early and she was <laughs> uh just getting out of bed <laughs> and there was just a little growl in her voice. And I remember <laughs> I remember seeing her uh, when we were trying to get her up and out to go to uh, school. It was, <laughs> it was the same. And there was the same, same resonance. <laughs> just, mm. I thought, oh, okay, I'm not going to poke that. <laughs> stay away from that one. <laughs> I'm really always grateful for like, you teaching me so much about life and, you know, you're so philosophical. Like I've never met a man who just knows so much about everything. It's insane. I love, I just listen. I remember I used to fall asleep all the time yeah. on the phone to you because I'd be like just listening to Pete and Pete would go on these like amazing tangents. Still does to this day, but like I've learned to say to you, hey, Pete, sorry, I'm going to go. Dad, I, I gotta go to bed. I'm no longer insomnia. I'm no longer an insomniac. I'm <laughs> off. Okay, so I'm just gonna stop there. Um, you know what? I'm just gonna leave that episode as it is, and we're actually gonna put the next half into the next episode next week. So if you want to listen to it, go check out next week. Thank you.